incredible miracle in, in Susie's life. That she heal really quickly, that the finances don't become a burden to her, that the, that the finances come in as they are needed, God. God, we also want to pray for Martha and Lena and, and, and their entire family as they've lost a sister in a tragic accident. God, I know those feelings of sorrow and frustration and pain don't go away right away. And so, God, I want to pray for them that they would experience a peace that only you could give. Finally, God, I want to pray for this message this morning. You know all that had to come into place for this message to, to happen. God, you only, only you know what, what you want people to hear. So, God, this morning as I preach and as I speak these words, that no matter how I stutter, no matter how I get lost and confused and throw up my notes, uh, God, that you would, be, you would be the voice that was heard and not me. God, I want to thank you for how incredible you are in your awesome and holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm excited to be here to, to share with you this morning. But one of the things that I've always learned is that there's, there's sometimes freedom in transparency. I shouldn't just say there's sometimes, there's almost always freedom in transparency. And one of the things that I want to just start the message with, just sharing something personally, maybe a little bit personally this morning. One of the things that we're talking about is talking about the armor of God. And talking about how the devil's in a battle for your mind. The devil's in a battle for your mind and your heart. He wants to mess you up. And so I honestly believe so many of the things that we go through emotionally in our lives, the things that tear us down, you've heard me say this, often things like that anxiety and that frustration and that stress is things where we're losing a battle that the devil's whispering in our ear. And I want to tell you something. This week, you know, I'm not a guy who deals with anxiety. At least I didn't think I was a guy who deals with anxiety. I'm not, when I go to bed, my wife gets angry because within maximum three minutes, like, and I'm not joking, maximum three minutes, I am out like a light. When my head hits the pillow, there is nothing that stops me from falling asleep because I just give it all away before I go to bed. I just give it all away and go straight to bed. And there was a moment this week where, where probably... One of the clearest moments in my life where I was going, I think I'm understanding just a glimpse of what people who can't do that go through. There was a moment this week where for no reason I could have put my hand through a wall. I, I, I'm going to make you raise your hand so I don't feel all alone. Anybody ever go through that where there is nothing that should be bothering you, but you just, you're just a little bit riled for no apparent reason? There's got to be somebody who's on my side here. Okay, good. Where... Where, where I actually, there was a moment this week where I, I sat down with my children and I said, hey guys, for some reason daddy's wound up a little bit tight. I hadn't done anything yet, I hadn't snapped at anybody yet, but I just, I could feel it. And I said, I'm going to give you guys a heads up. You guys remember when I said this? You might want to go play outside because daddy's just a little bit stressed right now. And, uh, and there was no reason, there was no purpose. Um, and I was sharing this morning with somebody else. Because I'm an outdoor redneck kind of guy, I said it's a little bit like, it's a little bit like my, my mind and my life is a forest. And it's just a forest of wildflowers. You know, I go to bed, it's just, I go to sleep in a forest of wildflowers. There ain't nothing that's going to bother me. I am just good as gold. And, and this week, a big old grizzly moved in. This big, a big old grizzly, big old angry grizzly moved in. And, and I didn't know why that grizzly was in there. But no matter what. You could tell there was a grizzly inside my life this week. And you didn't want to get on the wrong side of that because there was, I was wound tight. There was, there was a moment this week for, for a couple hours, for no reason, I could give you the time frame. And I was wound up tight. I was strung out. I was, it was, it was bad. And, and I remember this week, I, I actually went for a walk at about midnight. And, uh. And during that walk, God said, don't forget what you're supposed to preach on this Sunday. It's about time you learn how to practice what you preach. It's easy to preach about how not to get stressed when you're never stressed. You ever notice that? It's, it's, it's like the guy who preaches that God wants you to be wealthy and he's got a million bucks. It's easy to preach that message when you're not in the, when you're not in the, the, the jungles of South America, when you're not in the deserts of Africa. It's easy to preach that. It's easy to preach that God's just going to set you free from anxiety. He's just going to put that bear to sleep. When you're not dealing with anxiety, and I was so wound up, I'm not joking, I, there was a moment I legitimately thought, I wonder if I'd feel better if I just destroyed this wall. I just thought, maybe that'd feel better to just 
transfer the pain in here to the pain on my knuckles and just blaze this wall. Just, and, and I went for this walk. And this, none of this is my notes, so we're going to go over time, I'm sure. And, and I went for this walk, and, and the Holy Spirit just said, you lost sight of something. And, uh, and you let the bear take over your life. And so I'll be honest with you guys, I was able to that night through a little bit of time with God and remembering all that I have read and all that I have preached, I was able to, to put that bear into hibernation. Now my goal is to actually just climb in that cave and put that bear to, bear, bear to sleep for good. That, that's, that's the goal, right? Everybody's got that goal. You don't just want that bear to hibernate when you know you can still see he's there. I can honestly this morning, even this morning, you saw I was a little bit disconnected. It's because he's still sleeping. He's making me a bit nervous back there, that, that bear in the, in the back of my mind. And, and I, re, I was so actually encouraged this week to remember that sometimes God lets us go through things. Even me. Because he's like, Rick, it, it, it don't help to preach if you've, never, if, if you've never walked the path. You know, it don't help to tell somebody how to, how to get rid of the bear if you've never had a bear in your life. And uh, it was bizarre to me in that moment when I was just like, I don't know how to stop this thing. There is a bear and he's a raging and I can't stop him. And uh, so I want to talk about that a little bit this morning. I'm going to try and avoid putting too much personal stuff in it because I don't think that's healthy either. But I want to tell you something. I had to battle a bear this week. So I've titled my message this morning, Are You Ready? Are you ready? Feet fitted with readiness. For those who are visiting this morning, and you're wondering why the pastor's barefoot and in half-fire gear, it's because we're talking about the armor of God. And we're going to relate it a little bit to, to firefighting, and you're going to see that this morning. Uh, we're going to do some goofy things this morning. We're just going to have fun this morning for part of the service, because I feel bad for the kids who, who don't get to be at children's church, and so we're also going to mix it up halfway through with a bit of fun. Uh, so it's going to be a fun time this morning. But we're going to start by reading through the passage of the armor of God, and then focusing on what we put on our feet. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that, the, that when the day of evil comes, you may stand, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Put on the full armor of God. I think it's important each week to review what we've put on because, again, if I were to go into battle with only half the armor of God because I didn't catch those other sermons, you might not win a battle when you're only, like I am this morning, only half prepared. And so we're going we're gonna to talk about that. So first of all, the first thing we've got to remind ourselves is that we are in a battle. Each and every day we are in a battle. I want to tell you something. This week, there were no doors that mysteriously slammed in my house. There were no trees that mysteriously whispered in the leaves that whispered without any wind. There was, no, there, 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 there was nothing mysterious that happened in my life this week where the physical things of the devil moved me. But you know what there was? There was a whisper in the ear. There was a moment where a lie was whispered in the ear. There was a moment where there was deception in my heart. And there was a moment where I allowed the devil to just get a tiny little foothold in my life. You see, there was a moment where I forgot that this was a battle. There was a moment where I thought that I could solve this problem. As a matter of fact, I had a couple conversations this week that said, Rick, why are you trying to solve this problem? It's not your problem to solve. It's God's problem. And you simply have to put on the whole armor of God. That's what I got out of it. That's probably not exactly what they said, but that's what I got out of it. The beauty of the Holy Spirit. And I said, I said, I forgot that I was in a battle. But it was not a battle against a person. 
It was a battle against the devil and the lies that he's going to tell. You see, it's primarily a battle for the heart and the mind. That's what the devil does. In every single situation in this world, every single time that I have dealt with things in this world, I have dealt with men that were actually possessed by spirits. And I'm not going to get into that story. It's too long and bizarre. And, and I've dealt with men who have seen the devil do some physical things in their lives. But in every single moment, in every single case, the devil had already won their mind. You see, the mind is the door that he uses before he does anything else. And so it is primarily a battle for the mind. Nobody has ever been possessed by spirits who wasn't first, who, who didn't first buy into a lie. The Bible says that Satan is described as the father of lies, as the great deceiver. And so in order to fight the great deceiver, the first thing you have to recognize is that Jesus is the only way to victory. We look at this world and people say the Bible is half true. The Bible is true, but. Or we'll take scripture and we'll say, well, we're supposed to love everybody and therefore everybody and everything is okay. There's nothing that's wrong. You know, the devil starts to tell us these lies, but the Bible says that if you're going to have victory, you've got to recognize that Jesus is the only way. And anything else that you use, any social, social gauge, social moral compass that you use isn't the right moral compass. The right moral compass, the right direction, the right truth, the right way to get peace is to put your whole trust in Jesus. And the moment you stop putting it all in Jesus to get your answers, you are going to lose the battle. The second thing that we talked about is that once you believe that Jesus is true, you need to live like Jesus is true. You need to put on the breastplate of righteousness. I'd put on the jacket of righteousness, the fire jacket of righteousness today, but it's hot. And we talked about that last week too. We talked about how often do we compromise for comfort. That's what I'm doing this morning. That's why I'm not putting it on. I'm compromising the illustration for comfort. Uh, I don't want to be too hot. Um, and we do that in our lives as well. We begin to compromise just a little bit in our relationships with other people, in what we stand for, in what we believe, in how we carry ourselves. We begin to compromise, and then we wonder why we're losing the battle. We don't see how the thing over here and the thing over here are tied together. And so this morning, I want to encourage us to do that. You see, I'm building a... You know, somebody one time said, they feel like when I preach, I always look at the people that, 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 that I'm supposed to... That, that I'm preaching at, and, and it makes them uncomfortable. I think what I need is a big mirror here. That's why I'm taking a little bit, of, I need a big mirror here so that you guys can just see, I'm, you need to shape up, you know, shape up, buddy, and I'm just talking to myself, but I'll tell you what, it is a battle. It is a battle. We need to put on the breastplate of righteousness, which gets us to today. You're like, Rick, you've already used your whole sermon on the review. But I didn't. I got more, don't worry. Buckle up. And with your feet fitted, with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. As I did my research this week, as I studied a little bit deeper, one of the things that I do is I like to look at what, others, what other biblical leaders are talking about. Get some different perspective. I know that I don't have all the answers. I spend a lot of time in prayer, and then I spend some time looking at other people who pray. And everybody kept focusing on, you know, you got to put on the gospel of peace. That's not actually what it says. It says... And with your feet fitted with the readiness. Feet fitted with, another version says, preparedness. Are you ready for battle? Are you prepared for battle? You know, you get prepared by putting your confidence in the gospel of peace. That's how you get ready. But you got to be ready. We are always to be ready for battle but we're not to be fearful because we have the gospel of peace. And we're going to talk about both those things this morning. The Bible says in 1 Peter 3.15, I didn't put it down there, but it says, always be prepared to give an answer for the hope that you have in Christ Jesus. Always be prepared. Always be ready. Always know what the hope is that you have in Christ Jesus. You see, when it says always be prepared, it's not just saying be ready to share your faith. It's saying know what your faith is. You can't be prepared for something that you don't know what it is. That's why I love using the firefighter analogy. These guys are always prepared. I don't know if you knew that. These guys are always prepared. I wish I could have, I would have gotten in trouble. But if I had made a false, a false alarm this morning, which would have been cool, but would have been really bad for me. Uh, if I would made a false alarm, if right now, and I'm not going to do it, don't worry. But if right now I take my phone, and I made a call to 911 right now. And I said, please help. There's a fire. 
put that phone down. If you guys didn't hear me say that, in about two minutes, all of a sudden you'd, he, you'd see about four or five guys from church all grabbing their hips and, 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 and they're like, yeah, yeah, we're out of here. I, 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 mean, some, I can see half of them already. They're just like, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll get a fire call this morning. I remember, we were on this bike trip. No joke, we are on the bike trip. We are down in uh, something, something Wyoming. I don't know. Were we in Jackson? Okay, we were, we were down there in Jackson, Wyoming, and we're all standing around. The guys are like, grass fire. There's a grass fire. I'm like, dude, you're not going to make it home in time for that grass fire. I'm sorry. I'm like, good luck, but you are not going to make it home. Because these guys are always prepared. They're just like, they're like itching to get like, they, they're ready for battle. And they're always ready for battle. It doesn't matter where they are. They can be in church, they're ready for battle. They can be at home, they're ready for battle. For goodness sakes, they can be sleeping and they're ready for battle. And I think, man, that's what God wants for you. Are you ready for battle all the time? Are you focused on the fact that there is a battle raging for your heart, for your soul, and for your mind? And if you're not ready for it, you're going to be taken. You know, I'm reminded of, and some of the stories that you read about World War I and World War II and, and uh, the, the, you know, the, the trench warfare. Not the warfare today when the guys are in planes and drones and all that stuff. But when it was that hand-to-hand, it was, it was, it was moment-to-moment. They'd, they'd have trenches that were literally like 20 yards apart. And, they're, they're, and when they'd go to sleep, no soldier would go to sleep with his boots on the shelf. Only, oh, oh, only a dead soldier goes to sleep with his boots on the shelf because all it takes is for the enemy to know it's three in the morning and to jump over that trench and to jump into your side with his gun and you can't run away. And as you become outnumbered and, and, and your commander says, flee, flee, let's get to higher ground. And you're like, uh, there's too much shrapnel on the ground here for me to flee barefoot. I can't flee barefoot. I, I, I have an illustration somebody asked me about this morning. Again, this was not w- what I was going to use it for, but I'm going to do it now. Mouse traps. We all love mouse traps. I've used these before. Now imagine these are shrapnel or fire or whatever you want to imagine them as, whether you're using the armor as armor or the armor as firefighter equipment. Now imagine, I got to get, now, imagine, there's got to be more than them because otherwise I'll just step over, but I don't have time to set them. Imagine that I'm living my life. Yeah, I believe in Jesus. Yeah, I'm trying to be a pretty much a good person. But I've allowed myself to compromise on preparedness. I'm not ready for battle. I'm allowing myself to get into difficult, bad situations where there's the opportunity for me to be defeated. But I'm not going ready for battle. So I go to sleep. I let, I let my spirit sleep. I, don't, I think you know what I'm talking about. I'm still awake. But I let, my, I let my mental judgment sleep. I let my, I let my spirituality sleep. I let my prayer life sleep. And all of a sudden the devil comes in and attacks. You know, I did that a little bit this week. I started this week trying to solve all my problems on my own. I wasn't ready for battle like I should have been. And bam, what happens? The devil's like, ha ha, Pastor Rick thinks he's got all the answers. Pastor Rick forgot that he doesn't have any answers. Only Jesus does, and I'm not going to let him know about that. So he goes into battle, and I wake up, and I'm like, oh, okay, I got to, I got to, you know, all of a sudden I got to solve a problem. And I'm, I'm walking along, and I'm, I'm getting snapped, and I'm getting beat up, and that hurt a little bit. Um, and I'm going, to, I'm going into battle because I don't got my boots on. I'm not living with the gospel of peace in my heart right now. I'm living with the gospel of Rick because the gospel of Rick can solve problems. I, I am a problem solver. I'll, I'll tell you what to do. Here's how you solve this problem. You know what happens? All I do is make things worse. I actually learned that. I... I, I had my, I'm going to pick on her because I always do. I had my wife get mad at me this week, just a little bit. She says, you're always trying to solve problems. Stop trying to solve problems. Stop trying to do it on your own. I wasn't ready for a spiritual battle. I was ready for a people battle. I was ready for a relationship battle. But I wasn't ready for a spiritual battle. And it's time for you to make sure that every day you recognize that there is a battle for your heart. There is a battle for your mind. And the moment you take your boots off, the moment you take your boots off is the moment you're going to be defeated. Are you ready? So how do we get ready? You know, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to use the kids. I'm going to take, uh, I got a couple helpers this morning. Because I told you we'd, we'd, we'd have some fun with the kids this morning. Are you ready? So I'm going to stay barefoot. Uh, I got some soap here. I have a board up. It's not on the carpet. Don't worry. Oh, Wanda's not here, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, no, I'm good. Okay, so I'm going to put some soap down here. We're going to have a race. 
All right, some soap. We got some soap. I need uh, Braden, Ryan, and Tendai. I'm going to pick on my family. That way, if anybody gets hurt, it's my fault. I'm not Braden. He won't get hurt because he's tough. <laughs> he was already nervous. Now I said something about getting hurt. Add a little bit of water because that's always great. Ryan, I want you to get prepared for battle. So put those boots on. Okay, we're going to go like that. There we go. You guys have to have patience. This is a kid's feature halfway through the message, eh? We're going to mix things up this morning. Now you stay over there. So we got two firefighters here. We got the prepared firefighter. That's Ryan. He's got his boots on. And we got the unprepared firefighter. That's Dad. He's uh, unprepared. Okay, there we go. So Ryan, okay, here's what we're going to do. So you, yeah, we're good. I'll wash that later. So we're going to pretend we're firefighters. And I didn't have a big firefighter hose. Okay, so, so Tendai sits on one. Brayden sits on the other. Yeah, okay. That's mine. Where's my other stuff? Okay, we got that one. Do I have both? There we go. Oh, there we go. We're just going to short race, just to give you an example for the kids. So how do we get prepared for battle, guys? How do, we, how do we know that we're ready to go into battle? Well, first of all, let's see if that's hooked. We're going to talk about this a bit more later. Ryan, help me out here. We don't, want to, we don't want to take all of our time. Just don't get snapped on the fingers, okay? okay. <laughs> all right, we're going to have a race. Now, Ryan's got boots on, so he's not worried. <laughs> Ryan's got boots on, so he's not worried. Actually, bring the box over here. Here's what we're going to do. Yeah. Hey, don't snap those. <laughs> Now, all throughout there, mix up the ones that are actually. Now, put some set ones in there. So, here's what happens, guys. Are the kids watching? You guys watching? Satan's got a plan to trick you. And what he wants you to do is he wants you not to be ready to go into battle. He wants you not to know what to do. Hey, don't do that. He wants you not to know what to do. He wants to trick you so that you do bad things, the things that God doesn't want you to do. And when you do those bad things, you're going to feel guilty. You're going to feel shame. Then you're going to say, no, God makes me feel guilty. I don't want any of that. And, and so God's, you know, people got this, pl- Satan's got this tricky plan. And the Bible says that we're supposed to be ready. All right. So what we're going to do, right, well, that's good, right? We'll just leave. It'll take too long otherwise. Is that hooked on? So you just keep, you just stay on that thing. You just keep your hands up. Okay. Put some. So this is, this is supposed to be my fire hose because I couldn't bring a fire hose. But the fire, yeah, you can just hold on to that. Brayden, you can hold on to it. That's fine. The fire hose, it's heavy. So I have these guys. These are supposed to be the rest of my fire hose here. So we're going to try and drag our fire hose just till our feet are on the other side of that board. Okay? He might, still might not be able to do it because it is pretty slippery, but we'll see what happens. See if this illustration works. It worked at home. Okay. So Bible says, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, now the devil's coming. He wants, he's, he's building a fire over there. There's a fire, we gotta put that fire out before the devil gets control of in our mind. The devil's telling us lies. We gotta put that fire out. You're ready, I'm not ready. Okay, we're gonna go right over where the traps are. Don't worry, you got boots on. We're gonna pull these guys. You guys ready? Let's first see if we can pull them. I don't know, I didn't see if it was too heavy. Oh, and it's just gonna tip over. Oh yeah, tend I can be pulled. Okay. Yeah, put your feet down, maybe. Put your feet down so you can balance. Yeah, there we go. Here. You might have to help me scooch a little bit. Ready? Pull. Ow! That was a bad idea. (laughs) Well, thanks, guys. That sort of worked. Hopefully, I didn't break my mic. Okay, you guys go sit down. Thanks. Help me up, bud. There we go. All right. Okay, you guys go sit down. Thank you. I'll try not to touch any electronics now with all my soapy hands. So, guys, uh, so this is for the kids, guys. The Bible says that when you go to battle, you can take the boots off now. When you go into battle, Ryan, come on, smart up. When you go into battle, you have to be ready. You can't just fight the devil all by yourself. You need to have help. And how do we get ready to... F- how do we get ready... To fight the devil. 
How, how come I didn't have as much victory as I wanted in my life? Because the Bible says that we should always be ready to go into battle. We should always be prepared to fight the enemy. Because if we're not prepared, you guys all saw what happened. We were not prepared. You know, it's pretty easy to fall down on this, on this soapy thing here. It's pretty easy to say, yeah, I think I can fight you. You know, I'm not going to call him back up because he'll just goof around. But if I were to call Ryan back up and say, hey, we're gonna, we, me and my kids wrestle and I always win. Uh, but if I were to let him wear his boots... And I would be on this thing without my boots. I'd say, let's wrestle. First guy to the ground, first guy to the ground loses. Guaranteed my little kid can knock me over. Guaranteed even a weak little devil can knock you over if you're not prepared. A weak little devil can knock you over if you're not prepared. You know what? How many, anybody here have a temper tantrum? Anybody here have a bit of a temper? Anybody want to admit that? Some of you are honest. That's good. Anybody here ever lie? Everybody else says, no, no, not me. Okay. So that, that just lets me know who I'm dealing with this morning. So the reality is that the Bible says that we are supposed to be prepared. And I asked my, ask myself this week, how do I get prepared for battle? How do I get prepared? What did I do when the devil began to win? When the bear in my mind, you know that bear that makes you super angry in your mind, I want to beat everybody up. That bear in my mind, what did I do? How did I finally put that bear to sleep? I put, I read and memorize scripture. It reminds us of the gospel of peace. Do you know why I was going through a tough time this week? I, I was just wound up tighter than you've probably ever seen. If you could see inside my mind, I was so wound tight this week. And I remember going for that walk, and I just said, I just said, what, did I, what am I going to tell the people to do this week at church? See how that works? What am I going to tell everybody else to do? And I said, the first thing I'm going to tell everybody to do is to look at the Word of God. What does the Word of God tell us about Jesus Christ? And I looked at the word of God and I said, you know what? In the word of God, when Gideon was going to go into battle, God actually made him get rid of almost all his entire army. He wanted to prove something to Gideon. The thing he wanted to prove to Gideon is, Gideon, you're not strong enough to do it on your own. It's not your job to win the battle. It's my job to win the battle. It's your job to fight. It's your job to armor up. It's your job to stand on the hilltop and shout. Look at Jericho. Why did they walk around? It wasn't, it wasn't their job to defeat Jericho. It was their job to armor up. It was their job to march like a good soldier marches. And finally, when the walls came tumbling down, it was their job to look to the heavens, to blow the trumpet, and to declare the glory of God. And we looked through the entire word of God. We looked through the scripture, and time after time after time, there's a battle raging both physically and emotionally and mentally in the Bible. And every single time, the Bible says, God will take care of you. God will walk you through. And so I had these things in my life that were weighing me down. I was stressed. And I'll be honest, I told you, I haven't fully defeated that bear. He's sleeping right now. I still got to go in there with a spear yet, maybe later this week, and work some stuff out. But at the end of the day, I was able to say, God, if you could take care of Gideon, you could take care of my problem. God, if you could take care of David, you could take care of my problem. God, if you can take care of, you know, this, you can take care of my problem. Jesus, if you could rise from the dead, you could take care of my problem. You know what? Anxiety is usually just fear. It's those things that are pulling us down. And as I reflect on the incredible nature of God... As I reflect on the scriptures that I've already memorized and put in my mind, I remind myself that it's only not my battle to win. It's simply me, my my job to armor up and be ready for when God says to go. And far too often in our lives, far too often in my life, I try and solve the problem on my own. You know, I went out for that walk. It was probably about an hour walk. I probably spent half of it simply just reflecting on the word of God. Reminding myself of all of those things. You know, I talked to somebody this week about marriage, and, and in that marriage there was, there was a bit of an issue. And I, this is the advice I give everybody. If there's an issue in your marriage today, sometimes people say, well, I, I'm never going to, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I can never trust you again. And they say, Pastor, what's the advice? I just can't get that trust back. I said, well, how long, you know, maybe somebody's been married 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and I can't trust you anymore. Okay, but... Instead of just focusing on today, remind yourselves of the 20 years of of all the great things that happened, you know what? Your, your, your trust is going to come back a lot quicker. But we always focus on the one problem and not the 20 successes. And just like that in our own lives, when I'm going through a battle, I'm so focused on my battle. I'm like, God, how come you're not answering my prayer, fighting my battle for me? And he's like, why don't you just zip it for a second and remember, remember Gideon. But I can't remember Gideon if I haven't prepared by reading my Bible. 
He says, remember David. I can't prepare if I haven't, if I haven't read my Bible, if I haven't put the word of God in my mind. And so we got to be prepared for battle by reading scripture. The second thing that I did is I gave the battle back to God. I focused on how God was faithful to all those people for all those times and all those places, in all those situations, and my peace began to grow. The peace of the gospel began to grow, and when it did, I recognized that all I had to do was turn to Jesus. And so I, I, I said, Jesus, this is yours. I said, Jesus, I'm going to armor up. And God knows that bear's still sleeping in the back of my mind. He knows that. But I'm like, God, I'm going to, every day, I'm going to give that bear to you. I'm going to keep that bear sleeping for now. And I give that to Jesus, and I say, you know what? And I spent time in praying. And instead of just saying, God, I want this problem solved, I changed the way I prayed. You know what? I just, I just changed the way I prayed. I, I began to focus on the gr greatness of God. I began to focus on, on a prayer of love and not a prayer of anger. I, I began to focus on a prayer of, of peace and not of frustration. I changed my focus, and as I changed my focus, my anxiety began to slowly break down. You know, let's say you're married. I'm going to pick that as an example because that's not the example I, I, I went through. So just so everybody knows that's not the example I went through. There we go. I wander too much, I know. But instead of praying, God, change my wife's or my husband's, he'll pick something that's even, change my husband's stupid attitude, okay? So, so people will pray that sometimes. I don't know if you have, don't raise your hands um, because I don't want to see that. I don't, your, don't, your husband shouldn't see that. But I bet you if I made you raise your hand and if I said you prayed that God would change your husband's stinking attitude, many ladies would raise their hand. And I, I, I ask the opposite, many husbands would raise their hand. But I changed the way I prayed. You see, that's just being, that's just basically complaining to God is what that is. It's just complaining to God. But instead, if you were to say, God, bless the socks off my, my husband. Just give him such a blessing tomorrow that that stinking attitude goes away. You see how that changes the prayer? All of a sudden, that prayer grows your love and not your hate. That prayer grows your peace and not your anxiety. You see, that's how we change how we pray when we focus on the word of God. We focus on how he's answered all these other prayers, on the character of God, on the death on the cross and the resurrection, and we begin to have more peace knowing that God is in control. I said, give it all to God. God has already won the war. It is simply our job to obey and be faithful, and the rest falls on God. Never stop spiritually training or growing. Dave Weeb was preaching about this a little while back. Beat my body. The Bible says, you know, Paul says, I beat my body. I train daily. I get ready for battle. I look at these firefighters. I'm, I, I, I sort of play baseball. I'm, on, I'm a sub on the baseball team uh, that I hardly ever have time to get to. But I, I play baseball. And, and, and I realized in baseball, and we got this firefighter gear on today. I think it's one Tuesday a month or something. All of a sudden, half the team's like, we can't come today. We're, we're, we're preparing We've got a firefighter meeting or training or whatever it is. But the point is, is, that, is that to be a good firefighter, you've got to train. You've got you to never stop preparing. To be a good athlete, you've got to never stop training. And to be a believer, we've got to never stop training and growing in God. Which comes to the second thing, the thing that I needed the most this week. And that was to focus on the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. See, it's not a gospel of anxiety. It's not a gospel of frustration. It's not a gospel of destruction. It is a gospel of peace. I'm going to read that passage one more time. And with your feet fitted with readiness. Not a gospel of peace. Your feet fitted with readiness. That comes from, that you get, you will be ready for battle when you finally embrace the gospel of peace. And so what is the gospel of peace? Well, the gospel, also, we use the word gospel. It can be kind of paraphrased to the good news is what Jesus has done for us through his life and his actions. It is the death on the cross, salvation, and the promise to always be with us that brings us the good news or the gospel of peace. You see, the gospel of peace is the fact that Jesus already won the war. That there already should be peace. It's simply if we stay on his side, we should live in peace. Because Jesus has fought the battle for us. And so when we bring the good news to the world, we do it knowing that Jesus had already won the battle. I just want to read a passage because part of, part of putting, being ready is not just being ready to fight your own battles. It's a bit selfish. I, I know I'm often ready just to fight my own battles. 
But the Bible actually says that we should always be ready to go into battle. And I want to tell you something. The battle is not just for your heart and your mind. The battle is for the heart and the mind of your children, of your friends, of your neighbors, and of your co-workers. The devil is waging a battle against every single person in your life. And how often does the devil win the battle in your friend's life? And then your friend, with these weird ways of thinking, comes and convinces you to change your ways of thinking. Why? Because they've lost the battle. They bought into the deception. And it is our job as believers to fit our feet with readiness to change the world. Because that's the second readiness we've got to be ready for. We've got to be ready to change the world. We've got to have our beeper. We've got to have our pager on. So the moment that Jesus says there's a fire and it's ready to be put out. There's some fires that are raging out of control right now. But there's some fires that, that, that God has prepared in your friends' hearts and minds that are ready to be put out. That little grass fire, all it needs is just a little bit of water. See, Jesus, he's already, he's already brought the rain. He's already got that thing to a burning ember. And all he asks of you is to drop a little bit of extra water on that fire that he has already almost taken out. And, and he says, be ready for the call. How then can they call on the one that they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the gospel of peace. It's almost the same. It's, it's so similar. It's, it's, like, it's like the action plan after you've been told to put on the armor of God. How beautiful is it of those who put on the gospel of peace and they bring the gospel of peace to other people. So yeah, you've got to be ready for your own battles. You've got to fight your own battles. You've got to recognize that the lies in your head are, not, are, are from the devil. But when you finally had victory, you've got to bring that victory to the world. And if you're not bringing that victory to the world, you're, you're not going to experience the miracles of God. Because God's miracles are most often revealed as he gives us victory in battle after battle after battle after battle. One of my favorite things, oh, I'm going to be quick here. One of my favorite things when I was a kid is mom and dad brought, bought me audio cassettes of the entire Bible. And, uh, and, and, they, and the, the one that got worn out was disc, uh, number 13 and 14, they were numbered, 13 and 14. And 13 and 14 uh, were, 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 were about King David uh, and, and all the other awesome, cool fighting stuff, because uh, I was a kid. And, but one of the things that strikes me as amazing is that, is that as you read through the Bible, you realize that when David's mighty men would go to battle, he had, he had a couple guys, um, kind of the numbers seemed to change a little bit when, like, when they focused on different ones. There were five or six guys, and these were the mighty men. Some of them had like, you know, killed 900 people all by themselves to save like a field. Um, there was, I'm not going to move. The one guy fought so long that when he was done fighting, he couldn't let go. The sword was frozen to his hand. He could not let go of his sword, okay? And, and I think I, it reminds me this morning, again, none of this is from my notes, so I, I don't know where I'm going at this point. And, and it reminds me, it reminds me of a one, I bet you the first time he ever went into battle, if he had been like, hey guys, it's, it's 20 to 300, us 20, those 300, come to battle with me, they would have all been like, just back up, just back up, just back up. Just slowly disappear into the forest. And he's, he's, where is everybody? Where is everybody? But I can almost guarantee you, after the battle where he fought 900, when he had victory over 900 of the enemy, he could have probably basically told any soldier to do anything. And as long as they were doing it with him, they'd be ready for battle. You get what I'm saying? So when you can get victory in your life, when you can be victorious, it's when you have victories that God's power is revealed because he's the man who's defeated 900, 1,000, 9,000, 9 million, 9 billion of the enemy. And when you have your faith in Jesus and you see him do miracle after miracle, after battle after battle after battle that he wins, your faith is going to grow. But it's only going to grow when you first enter into battle. And how many of us are afraid to enter into battle? I'm going to wrap it up this morning pretty quickly here. It says, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. We just talked about that the other day. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. I, I, the Lord, belt the truth, call you in righteousness. I will hold, I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeons those who sit in darkness. The gospel of peace is the fact that Jesus has already won. Ah, he says, he says, I will hold your hand. <laughs> Let's go to battle. 
I will do it, but I still have something for you to do. And my question, I've got a couple questions for you this morning. Number one, have you fought the battles in your own life? How many of you have just armored up and said, I am, I have, I'm losing a battle right now. This week I had to remind myself that I was losing a battle and I can't come up here and preach and I can't tell you what, what the Bible says. I can't tell you how to victory if I'm sitting here crying in my own tears saying, I can't get over this. It was tough. I wanted to go to bed. It was midnight. But I was like, no, you're not going to bed until you win this battle. You can't preach anything until you win this battle. You can't get victory in any area of your life until you win this battle. And it's a battle I'm still fighting. And I'm not ashamed of it. None of us should be ashamed of the fact that we're fighting a battle. The only shame is the man who sits down and lets the devil beat him to death. And so as long as you are fighting a battle this morning, as long as you are trying to get victory in your life, I want to tell you, awesome. Congratulations. God is going to get you through this. So I don't care what you're going through this morning. I don't care what you're struggling with this morning. If you're struggling with something, commit to victory so that you can change the world and you can have peace and love and joy in your life. Number two, have you sought help when you needed it? It's one thing to be ready, but no firefight. <laughs> this is the other thing that I learned this week. Most of the firefighters were with us down in Jackson, Wyoming. And the, and the beeper went off, and, and the guys looked, and they've got a check-in thing. They've got to check in, right? And, the, and they're checking in. They're like, uh-oh, nobody's checked in. There's like two guys who had checked in. So like, they're like, don't worry about it. That's the first thing that, I, first thing that struck out in my mind. Don't worry about it. We'll call the Cleefeld Department. You see, we don't have to go into battle by ourselves. Only, oh, only a crazy, foolish firefighter says, oh, there's a building ablazing. Nobody else showed up. I'm going to try and do this all by myself. Usually that's the firefighter who goes to one call and doesn't make it out. But how often in our own lives we're dealing with st stress, we're dealing with marriage problems, we're dealing with problems with our kids, we're dealing with anxiety and depression and frustration and financial crisis. We're going through all this stuff and we're like, no. I am the great and powerful firefighter, and I can do this all by myself. If you're having a rough day, let somebody know. Let them pray for you. Do you know when I'm having a rough day, I'll even tell my kids now already. My kids know dad's having a bad day. The other day my kids prayed for me. They're like, dad's, you know what? It calmed me down mighty quickly to know that my kids recognized that I was going through a tough day, and they're going to pray for me. You know, it's okay. It's okay to be weak. It's okay to fail. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's just not okay to sit on your butt and, and do nothing about it. We have to pursue love, joy, and peace in our life. I am wound up today. Woo! Have you worked and prepared for battle? Are you reading your Bible? Are you praying? Are you memorizing scripture? This year, I'm super excited. This year, we're in the middle of making a program where we're going to get every, we're going to try and get every kid and hopefully their parents to memorize 50 passages of scripture by the end of the year. One year. So that by next year when camp comes, we can give discounts to kids from our church at camp. Why? Because they've memorized 50 pieces of scripture that will change their lives forever. When you memorize the word of God, it gives you victory. Jesus was tempted by the devil. The devil told him lies up on the mountainside. And what did Jesus respond every single time? He responded with the word of truth. He responded with scripture. And finally... Who do you want to, oh, I worded this funny. Who do you want to go to with the gospel of peace, either to see them saved or to see them set free? My last challenge for you this morning as we go into prayer time, worship team, come up. When we go to this time of prayer, ask yourself, have I, have I won the victory? If, you have, if you've not won the victory in your life, come and pray with somebody. If you haven't won victory, come and pray with somebody. If you're like me, and maybe you think you've got victory, but that bear, he's still, he's still snoring, and every now and again you think he's going to wake up. Let's pray with somebody. Let's go to somebody and get, get, get the help that we need. And if you think you've got that, I want to challenge every single person this morning. We did it the other day. Those names on the paper. I want you to pray that God's going to help you go into battle this week. Bring the gospel of peace to somebody who doesn't know Jesus. Or he's going to give you the wisdom to go to another believer who doesn't, is it, who, who's, who's barefoot. Who's not living in that peace. That you could be a warrior that could help you lift your friend up and get them the victory that they need. God, you are so incredible. God, I'm so thankful for who you are. God, I'm so thankful. God, I'm going to believe in faith this morning that even though I, I went on and on, even though I was distracted, I believe in faith that, God, there's somebody who needed to hear that this morning. And, God, it probably was me, and I want to thank you for that. And, and God, I just want to pray that as there are so many people who go through tough times, there are so many people who live in, 
in, in sorrow and frustration and, and pain. God, I want to pray that you set them free this morning when they truly decide to put on the full armor of God. I want to thank you that you, have that you sent your son. He died. He got victory. He, he defeated death. He defeated the devil. He gave us the Holy Spirit. God, I want to pray for that victory in my life today, and I want to pray for that victory in the lives of every single person who's here this morning. In your awesome and holy name, I love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's just worship God this morning. Terry, you just go ahead and stand on those mouse traps. So I'm going to share a little bit. I had a bear come into my life when I thought, man, I only got three people that are going to join me, or two people are going to join me today for worship. I thought, well, I'll just play a CD or something. It stressed me out. Like, I'm, that's just too much pressure. I don't want that pressure. I already chose that I didn't want that pressure. But uh, then I get encouragement and go, okay, that's good. Yeah, no, this, this is the best thing. I love this part. I love what's when it likes that. So I'm like, okay, let's put a couple of stools up here and get relaxed and enjoy ourselves and, and worship. You, if you want to sit through this whole thing and just enjoy it, sit down. You want to stand up and praise the Lord? Stand up and praise the Lord. So that bear, I put that bear to sleep, like euthanized sleep. Because that, that's enough of that. We allow that in our lives way too much to allow our mind to go places where it shouldn't go. And I went, man, I'm defeated. How am I going to do this? Pretty unrealistic, right? So we're better than that. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think your life, but I've heard a tender whisper love in the dead of night. You tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, I've seen many searching for answers far and wide but i know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of you are perfect in all of your ways to us. Sing that again. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to Undeniable, I, I can hardly speak peace. So unexplainable, I, I can hardly think as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. 
deeper still as you call me, deeper still into love, 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 love. You're a good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am. It's who I am, it's who I am. You're perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Sing that again. You are perfect. In all of your ways, you are perfect in all of your ways, you are perfect in all of your ways to us. Good, good father, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Another part of the bear that I thought was going to let attack me was what songs are you going to sing? How are you going to do this? Like it was just a struggle for me. Like sing the songs that mean things to you and the things, songs that are favorite of yours. And uh, you'll be fine. I was always told by a guy, you should be able to go up there and sing by yourself if nobody shows up. Right? We should be able to worship if nobody shows up. If you're at home alone and you need to worship, you're going to wait for all your friends to show up? Or are you just going to worship? Right? Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. You guys are amazing. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Sing that again. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy. The Lord God Almighty was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. of lightning rolls of thunder blessing and honor strength and glory and power be to you the only wise king yeah holy 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 is the Lord God almighty was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. 
you are my everything and I will adore you filled with wonder filled with wonder awestruck wonder at the mention of your name Jesus your name is power breath and living water such a marvelous mystery yeah holy 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 is the Lord God almighty was and is and is to come with all creation i sing praise to the king of kings you are my everything and i will adore you I got to come up for one time and do my testimony. I feel like I'm sitting here today and I could share my life. That's crazy, though, eh? Sit, stand, raise your hands. Whatever God's asking you to do, give Him the glory in all things. God, you're so good. I'm going to come to a place of worship where we just want to give, give back. If your heart's pounding, don't let it pound too hard. There's somebody beside you that'll pray for you. There's somebody up front that'll pray for you. God, you're good. sing that. In these waters, healing mercy flows with freedom from despair. I am going to the river. Lord, I need to meet you. Precious Jesus, I am ready to surrender every care. Take my hand now, lead me. 
song. All the earth will 
will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out So praying. You want to hear another song again? What do you want to hear? Let's do the river again. Only because it's my all-time favorite song and it moves my heart for things that are going on in our lives. Nine years ago, my wife phoned me and said, "Hey, they have another baby up for adopt or not up for adoption, but not up for um." What's the word? Foster care? And I'm like, uh, yeah, hon, I'm behind you 100%. I don't know if I was in my brain or my heart, but our life has been changed. And I think I sang this song with him for, I don't know, five years. Every night, going to bed. That things are crazy in your life when you don't know what they are about. Uh, but what a blessing it's been. To the river I am going, bringing sins I cannot bear. Come and cleanse me, come forgive me, Lord. I In these waters, in these waters, healing mercy flows with freedom from despair. I am going. This is my favorite day. <laughs> to the river, Lord. I Precious Jesus, precious Jesus, I am ready to surrender every care. Take my hand now, lead me closer, Lord. Take my hand now, lead me closer, Lord, I need to meet you there. God, you're so incredible, and you give us victory in our lives when we seek you. So God, I want to pray a huge blessing on everybody in this church this week as they seek you. They seek each other in relationship and that we grow close and we go into battle and we go into battle ready knowing that you have already sent your son who's died and defeated the devil over and over again, God. So we claim victory this week as we, as we leave this place in your awesome and holy name, Jesus. Amen. God bless. Have an awesome week, guys.